What's going on guys? This is Gaines Gaming. Today we are talking about the top five worst commanders in the game, in my opinion. Obviously, you might have a different opinion, but in my opinion, these are the top five worst commanders in order. I'm going to start with number five. Number one is going to be the ultimate worst commander in the game. And just for reference, we are not going to be counting gold key commanders because those are commanders you do not have to invest into. What I'm talking about is commanders that you would have to then invest into to use. So coming in at number five is going to be Suleiman the first. I feel so bad for all the people that invested in him to test because, you know, someone has to bite the bullet and somebody has to invest in these commanders to test out if they are going to be viable or not. And if you've never heard of Suleiman, it's because nobody uses him because he is a completely wasteful commander. He is a leadership conquering and attack commander. And as you know, they pretty much just screwed over leadership and said, we are done with you. We do not want anything to do with leadership. We are moving on. That's when they brought in the engineering commanders. And it seems like they are just done with leadership at this point. I, I don't know if they're going to add more leadership commanders in the future, but as of right now, I think they've skipped it either once or twice now and releasing new leadership commanders. But he is again a rallying commander. Now, let's go over his skill set just briefly. Just talk about like if he even could be considered a usable commander, because I honestly haven't looked at his skills in so long, probably since he was released. But his first skill deals direct damage to a target troop 1300 damage factor if the target has less than 50 percent rage it loses 30 percent defense and 30 percent health for two seconds yeah that absolutely sucks i don't know who looked at that and thought yeah let's let's test to see if that's good <laughs> but moving on here this commander's troop gains 15 percent attack and 15 percent defense while outside alliances territory their troop takes 10 percent less damage that skill actually isn't too bad. That's pretty good for rallying because obviously when you're rallying, you're doing it off your own territory in pretty much every circumstance. Now going on to number three, whenever this commander's troop launches a basic attack against a stronghold or city, has a 10% chance to reduce the target's normal damage dealt by 20% and skill damage dealt by 20% for three seconds. Again, that's actually pretty decent. I mean, the five second cooldown is, is iffy. I mean, obviously it'd be nice if there was no cooldown, but that would probably be a little too overpowered in my opinion, especially with the normal damage, because that definitely could be more viable as we move on here. I mean, maybe Suleiman is going to come back. Who knows, right? Going to number four, this commander's troop deals 5% more normal damage. If their troop contains at least two different unit types, whenever it takes skill damage, it gains a 50% bonus to skill damage dealt for three seconds. That's really interesting. You don't really hear of rallies being multi-troop. Typically, it's just one troop type, but that is an interesting thing. This actually could be good in a KBK where you can use different skills on different commanders because, I mean, with normal damage, that could be interesting with smite damage. But let's look at his expertise. If this commander's troop has over 70% rage, whenever it launches a basic attack, it deals additional damage to the target, damage factor 200, but the target also gains 50 rage. Okay, that expertise sucks. You do not want that. My goodness. That, no, that's that's so bad. Okay, yeah, Suleiman, I give that, I would give that like a 3 out of 10. I mean, maybe he has some promise going forward with smite damage, but as of right now, that just completely sucks. All right, going to number 4. The number 4 worst commander, in my opinion, is Moctezuma. Moctezuma is a really interesting commander because he is good for one thing and one thing only hitting barbarian forts and you will see whales use him because like if you're using Moctezuma as a whale that's kind of just like a trademark of like oh yeah I have so many extra sculptures I'm investing into Moctezuma that's that's kind of what his meme is about you know and I think it was Apo Apocalypse Gaming that thought that Moctezuma was Pakal and so he was like pushing in Mightiest Governor trying to win sculptures because he wanted to get 180 sculptures of Pakal and it was actually Moctezuma. <laughs> Let me know in the comments if I'm right about that. Apo, if you're watching this, please comment and respond to that because that's honestly hilarious. They do look very similar though. Like look at the two pictures. They they do look very similar. I mean, they have like similar headdresses and different colors or the same colors. They do look very similar, you know, so I can definitely see how he mixed those two up. But let's go over the skills. We have leadership, peacekeeping, and skill tree. Again, peacekeeping, hitting barbarians. First skill. Deals direct damage to a target troop of 1400 damage factor for the next four seconds. The target deals 15% less counterattack damage. That's just abysmal. Second skill, this commander's troop deals 50% more damage to barbarians. Both the primary and secondary commander of this commander's troop gains 25% more XP from defeating barbarians. 
Whenever their troop launches a basic attack against barbarians, it has a 10% chance to reduce the target's health by 50% for 3 seconds. Literally just all about barbarians right there. His third skill. Commander's troop gains 10% march speed and 20% attack if the target of this troops has been afflicted with a health debuff. Whenever this commander's troop launches a basic attack, it will recover a portion of its slightly wounded units. Healing factor 700, cooldown 5 seconds, so you get some extra healing. 4 skill. If this commander is leading a rally attack, the rallied army gains 10% unit capacity. Whenever their troop takes skill damage, it deals direct damage to the attacker. Damage factor of 600, cooldown 5 seconds. Maybe I need this on my farm account so I can launch some rallies with him. Maybe I'll start doing that. <laughs> and then his expertise upgrades his four skill. So with the expertise, if he is leading a rally attack, rallied army gains 10% unit capacity, so same thing. And then you get an extra 200 damage factor and then one second less on the cooldown. So I honestly give that like a two out of 10. I mean, that's, that's, that's really bad. Okay, going on to number three. I have a funny story about this commander. So... Number three, we got Charlemagne. And take a really good close look at the skills here. And you can see 5110. I put gold heads into Charlemagne because I did not know what I was doing. I unlocked him right after KVK2. This was before I did my restart account. And so I was just like, oh, I don't really care. I'll put some gold heads into him. I want to see, can you actually see how many gold heads I put into him? Oh my gosh, 40 gold heads. I mean, it's better than some other ones I, like it's better than like 100 but 40 gold ads that's just depressing oh my gosh this should honestly like bump him down to number one because i put gold ads into him but charlemagne comes in at number three the king of hearts let's go over his skills he's leadership conquering and skill and if you didn't know you do unlock him from winning kvk2 i believe or is it kvk1 i'm pretty sure it's kvk2 uh correct me in the comments below if i'm wrong but his first skill just deals direct damage to target troop 1400 damage that's so bad his second skill if this commander's troop is on the map whenever it is hit with the basic attack it has a 10 percent chance to gain a damage absorbing shield for four seconds damage factor 1000 with a five second cooldown that is fantastic sarcasm by the way <laughs> if this commander is leading a rally attack the rally army gains 10 percent attack and defense okay that it's like a KVK-1 commander. Let's go. And then his four skill here. This one's a little bit longer. So for every 10% of its units it loses, this commander's troop deals 5% more skill damage, 7% if it is attacking a city. The maximum bonus from this skill is 15%, i.e. when this commander's troop has less than 70% units remaining, this limit is then increased to 21% if their troop is attacking a city. This is just like so confusing. The numbers are just weird, like 2 to 7%. You'd think this would go to 10 and that this would go to like 25, but that's just weird. And then his expertise, if this commander's troop is attacking a city, 10% of their dead units will instead be severely wounded and sent to your hospital. That's actually pretty decent, but you know, it's not reason to use him for a city rally because you're going to take way more deads doing that, way more than 10% more deads. So it just overall, a horrible, horrible commander and honestly just an insult to the king of hearts. All right, coming in at number two, this one I honestly almost put at number one because you have to pay so much to unlock him and to expertise him, but that is Hannibal Barca. Hannibal Barca is a leadership, conquering, and attack commander, and if you didn't know, you get him from buying VIP chests, so I can't remember which one shows it right down here, so it is the VIP, it is a VIP 10 where you're able to unlock Barca. And this one, you're also getting books of the Covenant. So when people are buying for the books of the Covenant, they're not buying it to get Barca, but they're buying it for the books of the Covenant. So he comes in at number two. Uh, you know, obviously I could have put in number one just because of the, the pay to win aspect of him and just how bad of a commander he is. But let's go over his skill kit. So again, he's leadership conquering and attack. His first skill deals direct damage to a target troop. Damage factor of 400. My goodness. The target deals 25% less damage and loses 25% defense for 5 seconds. Now, that one's pretty decent, but, you know, 400 damage factor, that, like, could you get any lower than that? Like, I feel like Chandler from Friends, like, could you be any lower than 400 damage factor? My goodness. All right, number two. If this commander's troop contains two different unit types, again with the unit types and leadership, it deals 5% more damage. If their troop contains three more unit types, it deals 10% more damage. So it's just really weird, you know, rallying with more than one unit type. It's just something we're not really used to. Then his third skill. 
If this commander's troop is attacking a city, whenever their troop launches a basic attack, it has a 10% chance to recover a portion of its slightly wounded units. Healing factor of 1,000, 5 second cooldown, that just sucks. This commander's troop gains 10% unit capacity. Whenever their troop uses an active skill when outside of alliance territory, it gains a 15% bonus to damage dealt for 3 seconds. That's decent, but still nowhere near good enough to make him usable. Then his expertise enhances his war elephant skill. This will deal direct damage to target troop, damage factor 400, and then deals additional damage to up to three enemy troops in a fan, so you get an extra, you know, AoE. Then troops hit by this additional damage deal 25% less damage and lose 25% defense for five seconds. So his expertise does enhance that, but I mean, it didn't even increase the damage factor, which is just crazy to me that they wouldn't do that because I mean, he's just, oh my gosh, it's such a bad commander but not as bad as the number one commander. This is one of the biggest meme commanders in the game. And if you don't know who this is yet, I'm kind of shocked, but this commander is Lu Bu, the Dynasty Warriors commander. This, like, I cannot believe that they even did this. I mean, Dioshan, she is fantastic. I use her every single day for barbarians, but Lu Bu, oh my goodness. So if you didn't know who this commander is, you might not even see him on your screen if you're you know, a newer player because he's not even available anymore. You can't even unlock him or, or buy him. You had to pay to unlock him, kind of like Hanel Barca or Minimoto. But Lubu, I think he was like $15 to unlock. But I mean, he like you can't unlock him anymore. You had to buy the powerful Demon God bundle and it started at 15 bucks to unlock him. And like if he was meta, this would have been, you know, this probably would have started the huge downhill of Rise of Kingdoms. If Lu Bu would have been meta, that would have been just horrible. Like imagine if Lu Bu was like Lu Che or like Herman Prime or like Nevsky or Joan Prime. Like if he was that good, so many people would have quit because they'd be like, seriously, you're gonna make me pay $15 to unlock this commander that is like the best in the game. So I am so glad that he is the number one on my worst commanders in the game list because if he was number one in the game, that would be just horrible for the game, in my opinion. But let's go over his skills. He's a leadership, conquering, and skill commander. His first skill deals direct damage to up to three enemy troops in a fan, damage factor of 800. And then troops hit by the skill lose 40% defense for three seconds. So, you know, very low damage, still AoE, so better than nothing. But um, his expertise does upgrade this, so we'll take a look at that in a second. His second skill. This commander's troop deals 10% more damage when attacking a city. Just absolutely horrible. Third skill. This commander's troop gains 15% attack. Okay, pretty low stats. Whenever their troop launches a basic attack, has a 10% chance to gain 80% attack for 3 seconds. If Dao Chan is in this commander's troops, instead it gains 120% attack. So they want you to use them together. Why on earth would you use Dio Chain in the open field? She is a barbarian commander. This is just so stupid. And they want you to use them together. Like it makes sense, but it's just crazy with and without Dio Chan. And then his four skill, this commander's troop gains 10% unit capacity. If this commander's troop is leading a rally attack, the rallied army gains 10% unit capacity. That's just so, so bad. His expertise affects his first skill. So you're getting an extra 200 damage factor. So 1000 damage factor. And then troops hit by the skill will lose 50% defense instead of 40% for three seconds. So let me know what you guys think down below about my list. If you have any other commanders that you would add, some honorable mentions that I'll just kind of throw out there. One commander that was going to land on here was Bertrand. I think he'd probably be like six or seven. Chandra is another commander I was kind of iffy about because, you know, he's like some people use him on like a seventh or, you know, honestly, eighth march. I almost threw Wu in here as well, but I know some people like to use her for city defense. I wanted to, you know, take some of the garrison or like strictly garrison commanders out of the picture um, because, you know, typically like like ralliers, like they're mainly used for rallying, but they can also be used for open field versus like you can't use Wu or Theo in the open field. So that's why I didn't really, you know, put any garrison captains on here. But, you know, I almost put Genghis on here, but he's really good for KVK too. And I was kind of sticking to, um, you know, Season of Conquest. Same with like Edward, same kind of premise there. But let me know what you guys think down below about this list. If there's any other commanders that you would add on there, or if you would take those five commanders and be like, no, these are not the worst in the game. Like this commander is good. Let me know if there are any commanders on that list that you think are actually good. If you guys enjoyed the video, do me a favor, drop a like and subscribe. And let me know down below what you guys want to see next. Thanks for checking out the video.